What we're going to do today is create a Linux instance, a system running Linux in the cloud that is on Amazon's computer system. And then you're going to log into that system for free through the internet and be able to view that Linux desktop even though you don't have Linux running on your own system. Type aws.amazon.com into your browser and log in to Amazon's AWS. It will ask you for a credit card number the very first time you use. This is because if you use lots of bandwidth, they will charge you. Although in the demonstration we use, we will not use a lot of bandwidth and we will choose the free instance. So it shouldn't cost you anything, but please check the current terms and conditions on the Amazon site. When you log in, ensure you choose EC2 and check your region. Your, if you create a, an instance in one region and you change to another region, you won't be able to see your other instance. So pick a region and stay in that one region. Click on one of the launch instance buttons and then choose Community AMRs. Then type in daily R386 desktop and you can just copy that from the description field. In YouTube, check for the little yellow star, which means it's free. You can hover your mouse to check the full description on the uh, name of the system and then choose select. Then you can make sure that it's on micro. This will ensure that you get a free system that uh, won't be of any cost depending on the current terms and conditions which you need to just check on the Amazon site. Enter a name for the system. This is so that you can identify it if you create more than one. You then enter a key pair name. You need to download this. This is something like a login password and you must never lose this file or you won't be able to log into your server. We now need to create a security group which has various rules about what access we can grant and we need to start with SSH. We'll add some more later. You are now ready to launch your instance and you now have a computer system running in the cloud on the Amazon servers. You need to wait for it to boot. We will now find the name of this server on the internet and uh, we copy that name so that we can get access to this computer system. So copy that into your clipboard. We now need a program called PuTTY which will help us log into the Unix system. Download the PuTTY program and the PuTTY gen program. Go to the folder where you downloaded Putty Gen and double click on it and click on load. You're now going to load the key that was downloaded from Amazon. So you choose that file. Make sure you click OK when it loads and then save the private key. You can choose any name for the new key that you are saving. This key can now be used to log into the system with PuTTY. We're now going to log in to our Ubuntu system. So we paste in the name of the system, add the user login name at the front, Ubuntu, an at sign. Then we're going to need to give the equivalent of the password, which is the key. Either type in the key name you created or browse for it. You should get a security warning the first time you log in. Simply choose yes, and then it should log in and give you a prompt. If you didn't add the word Ubuntu and the at sign before the, the DNS name, then it will prompt you for a name and just type in Ubuntu. We now need to enter a few commands to ensure that we can install something called VNC, which allows us to view the desktop remotely. Copy and paste the commands from the 
description in YouTube or type them out as you can see them on the screen. When you get to that prompt, yes, no, you can just press enter. To paste in PuTTY, you just right click and it will paste the text. Paste one line at a time. When it prompts you for a password, create any password you wish, which allows you to take control of the desktop. The VNC software has now created a default file and we need to edit this file so that we can remove the last two lines which create a default window. So we do that by loading VR and then moving to the very last line of the configuration file. Ensure your caps lock is off and press little d, little d. So by pressing d, d you delete the last line and then you delete the second last line by pressing D, D again. You then press the O key and that opens a new line and we replace it with GNOME session ampersand which allows the desktop to be loaded, the graphical desktop instead of a text window. When you finished adding the last line, GNOME session ampersand, you press the escape key to leave edit mode, then press capital Z, capital Z to save and exit the VR editing program. We now need to download a VNC viewer. So we have a VNC loaded on the server and it's sending the graphical information. We now need a program on our Windows system to view that graphical information. You can either load type VNC from that website or from a download site such as CNET. We now need to go back to the Amazon EC2 interface and change the rule so that we can allow the graphical information in and out of the system. So we're changing the security group to allow ports 5900 to 5910 and make sure you click add rule and to update the rule. We then need to copy the DNS name again so that we can log into the system. We're now going to test the connection. So we load type VNC, paste the name and connect. Type in the password we selected when we loaded VNC for the first time on Unix. And if everything's working, you should get the default text window. This you can close as it won't be needed. We now go back to our SSH login and we reload the VNC server with a graphical interface. We're now going to load the desktop in a window. So we add colon one, which is our new window, and connect, put in the same password, and we now have the desktop loading in a window. You may find the window is somewhat unresponsive for a while, and it may be a little bit slow depending on your internet connection. Also, we are using a micro instance, which is an exceptionally slow uh, system. So you may find for moments it does not respond. This is normal. Eventually, the desktop should load, and you can now use your Linux desktop. Finally, when you're done, you want to shut down the system and you do that by going back to the AWS console, making sure only your one desktop is ticked and stopping it. When you no longer want it and you want to delete it completely, you choose Terminate. Before you try load Boink onto an instance, do some research on the internet. As you can see, some people have done research and found that, especially with the micro instance, this is not very cost effective to run Boink because the micro instance typically runs at less than 0.1 gigahertz on average. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative.